सो नाउ चैप्टर एट टिल नाउ वी डिस्कस उत्तरास प्रेयर एंड द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ अश्वमेध यज्ञ सो आफ्टर महाराज परीक्षित इज सेव्ड देन कुंती महारानी प्रेयर आर स्टार्टिंग इन दिस एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो कुंती महारानी सीज लॉर्ड कृष्णा लिविंग बैक टू द्वारका सो कुंती प्रेयर स्टार्ट एंड इन सेवनटीन वर्ड अ ब्यूटिफुल वर्ड फॉर कुंती इज यूज एज सती एज चेस्ट एंड वाई शी इज कॉल्ड चेस्ट बिकॉज शी हैज फिक्सड हर माइंड ऑन कृष्णा बाय अन एलॉयड डिवोशन and this mood will be exhibited in her prayers that how her mood is unalloyed where shri prabhupad writes kunti is described as sati or chaste due to unalloyed devotion her mind will be now expressed so kunti's mind will be expressed in the prayers and shri prabhupad writes for further in 17th purport he says unalloyed means does not look to others for shelter here it is mentioned does not look to others for deliverance from danger even from living being or demigods does not look to others neither to any living being any other living entity which can even be a demigod does not take shelter amidst danger purely take shelter of supreme lord krishna that was all along the characteristics of the whole family of pandavas they knew nothing except krishna and krishna was ready to help in all respects in all circumstances so that is sati so now that chaste devotee shrimati kunti devi starts offering her prayers and we have analyzed her prayers in following points first she repeatedly offers obeisances and this point will be seen in different different prayers where she says i bow down to you i offer obeisances to you i offer my respects to you so repeatedly offer obeisances and after that she glorifies different features of the lord of lord's personality or of devotional service and one of the first thing we see she recognizes lord's supremacy in text number 18th we can say see that lord supremacy is highlighted where she says namasya purusham tvadyam ishwaram prakrite param in terms of she is all the lord is always unaffected by the qualities of material world and before that she says purusham tvadyam you are the original personality of godhead so the original personality of godhead unaffected by the qualities of material world that is the supremacy of shri bhagwan shri krishna she points out and then she says you are existing both within and without yet you are invisible to all so lord who is supreme personality of godhead material world does not affect him so although he is a supreme person like many other persons who are visible to us next point kunti manani third point which she focuses on the invisibility to the common observer that although he is original but still people fail to recognize him so he is invisible although he is within and without 
and kunti devi herself has experienced that also, although shri krishna is standing outside as a person in front of her at the same time from within he is protecting maharaj parikshit as a child who is a child in the womb of uttara so she is telling that krishna is within and without yet people cannot recognize him he is invisible because she says you are beyond the next verse she says you are beyond the limited sense perception with our mundane senses we cannot see the presence of krishna and we have seen many demons also although they see krishna but they do not see krishna because they see krishna with mundane senses and therefore she says that krishna is eternally irreproachable one cannot approach supreme lord or perceive him easily by mundane senses what is covering he is covered by the curtain of deluding energy curtain is covering which curtain lords deluding energy and who is covered the person who is covered is referred to as the foolish observer who is trying to see by his own mundane senses but lord is invisible and the example which is used is just like a actor dressed in a play in a drama as a player cannot be recognized similarly supreme lord cannot be recognized so after mentioning that in text number 19 then finally so first she talks about the supremacy of the lord then how that lord is so difficult to be seen or approachable or visible cannot be easily approached so somebody who is so supreme who cannot be easily approached by anyone what to talk of if the person is so insignificant especially kunti maharani considers her insignificance as a woman that she is insignificant less she is less intelligent already it is mentioned in text number 19 that to a foolish observer krishna is not visible and kunti says she is less intelligent she is a woman in 20th verse she says lord specifically descends for whom to propagate the transcendental science unto advanced transcendentalists and purified mental speculators those who are purified by knowledge so for them lord descend they are also referred to as paramhamsas but even they find so difficult to approach what to talk about insignificant women kunti devi is feeling out of humility so she is expressing extreme degree of humility of feeling of insignificance now after considering her insignificance supremacy of the lord invisibility and difficult to approach then in text number 5 she feels very grateful and starts glorifying krishna as he is in front of her because now although he is so unapproachable but he is available to kunti devi and starts glorifying krishna 
in the for with respect to the family relationships what are the various family relations she mentions in text number 21 she says krishnaya vasudevaya devaki nandanaya cha son of vasudev krishnaya vasudevaya devaki nandanaya cha son of devaki nanda gopa kumaraya he is the dear boy of nanda govindaya namo namah he is the enlivener of cows and senses and this way because krishna feels very happy if you glorify krishna in relation to the devotees who are very dear to krishna cows are very dear nand maharaja vasudev playing the role of father and devaki as the mother so she pleases krishna by glorifying with respect to family relationships and once she focuses her attention on krishna then in text 22 because now she is understanding that somebody who is so unapproachable has come in front of her so then in the next point sixth she meditates on the beautiful form of the lord she focuses her attention on the form of krishna as standing in front of her in text 22 and she says namaha pankaj nabhay नमः पंकज मालिने नमः पंकज नेत्राय नमस्ते पंकजांग्रहे नमः पंकज नाभाय सो एब्डोमेन प्रोपर ट्रांसलेट्स मार्क्ड विद डिप्रेशन लाइक अ लोटस नमः पंकज नाभाय एंड देन With a lotus flower garland, Namaha Pankaj Malini, Namaha Pankaj Nitraya, Prabhupada says, whose glance is as cool as lotus. And not only that, Namaha Pankaj Angrahe, whose feet are engraved with lotuses. So thus she meditates on the beautiful form of the Lord, and then in the next verse, she starts expressing her gratitude again for the unlimited protection offered by the Lord, Hari Krishna.